Now, I've just got a quick video today, just investigating the fault on this 2013 Audi A1. Basically, we've got the DPF warning light on there, we've got an engine light on. Uh, I've just plugged it in, we've got some fault codes in the engine ECU. Basically, we did have three in there, two of them have cleared out and one's a permanent code, but we had P0112, P0111 and P2279. Uh, air leak detected as well it was but the other two codes will clear straight out and we're just left with this one fault code in there we're just going to have a look into this now but i'm pretty sure that these issues that are logged in there are affecting it stopping it from doing a dpf regen and that's why it's logging the dpf fault as well so we're just going to concentrate on this to start with get this issue sorted and then give it a drive and see if we can get the dpf light out as well um, but it's actually quite a common issue on these if we just go into the engine control module and just look at some of the data Just show you what we've come across straight away and noticed. So we're just going to go into the air intake air temperature, and you can just see. I mean, at the minute this is stone cold and it's reading 130 degrees. Now I've got a map sensor. Now you do need to be checking the wiring first. But it's really easy to disconnect the plug on this, so all we're going to do is just disconnect the plug. Rather than going through all the checking all the individual feeds, we're just going to simply plug this in because I've got one on standby and just see if it affects the temperature reading first. Obviously, if it does and it puts it down to a normal reading, then we can get on to actually replacing the sensor and making sure it'll fix the fault and see if we can uh, get it sorted after that. Right, just coming under the bonnet, just got the diagnostic machine out here because when we've done it, I'll just show you on the machine what it's reading. But the map sensor on these is just located just down the front there. I'm just trying to stick the camera down. And you see the sensor there, that has got a little, two little torque screws just holding it on, and just the connector just on the side there. So I'm just going to pop the connector off now and just plug the new one in and just see what it reads. Just to show you quickly as well, with it disconnected, you can see it's got a default on there, minus 40. Right, yeah. well, as you can see, we've got a new sensor just plugged in there, just simply connected it just loosely for now. And if we look at the data reading, you can just see we're now reading 16 degrees, which is a realistic reading. We'll just get the sensor swapped over properly. And once we've done that, we'll attempt to clear the fault code, just make sure it'll clear it, and then we can give it a run and make sure it's fixed all the faults. Right, so the new part's fitted now. Just got the old one there. You can just see we've got some more fault codes logged in there. That'll just be with obviously having it disconnected, that's all. So what we're going to do now is just attempt to clear all the codes. As I said before, one of the codes was permanent in there. Whether the ignition was on or it was running, it wouldn't let you clear it. So let's have a go at clearing that now, see if it allows us to do it. Oh, we've just got a throttle position switch in there. I know what that is. Actually, while we were taking the pipe off at the top, the um, the connector's been off of the throttle body. That's obviously still off at the minute. Just reconnect that quickly, and then that should just clear that one out as well. Uh, so just reconnected that throttle body one as well. Just forgot to connect that back up, so we should be able to clear that now as well. Right, so now that everything's clear, we're just going to get it running and then we'll just give it a good run. Just make sure that DPF light goes out and go from there as well. Right, so just left it till the next morning. It was getting a bit late last night to finish it off. Um, but we'll give it just give it a five mile road test this morning. The engine light's now off when it's running. We've still got the DPF light on. We've just done a full diagnostic scan. We know that the map sensor, which there's the old one just there, it's a quite a common issue, these on quite a few vehicles. But we knew it definitely wasn't reading right. We could see it alter than read the temperature correctly as soon as it was fitted but the engine ecu is all clear now so we know it's definitely fixed that we have just got one fault in there just logged which is compl somewhat completely different but the dpf issue i suspect because they've had the fault there 
Um, they've left it running and it's not been regening properly so it's just started to block the dpf up five miles probably not quite enough to clear the code and it was a bit of a shorter sort of run through town as well if i'd kept driving this probably a bit longer and gone some decent runs that probably would start doing a regen on its own accord and clear it out but just to speed things up all i'm going to do now is just run it through an actual regen procedure for the diagnostic machine hopefully as soon as we've done that we'll be able to get that code out as well so i'll get the warning off the dash Just so it's just a few options you've got to run through while we're doing a, re a DPF regen. It just wants to let you check out. A lot of features you can just say it's reading 29 grams at the minute, which is it's just pretty well blocked in the DPF there. So we need to get that level right down. Right, so that's the DPF regen initiated. Now you can see on this screen there, while it's doing it, we can see the actual grams in the DPF. We can see some of the temperature readings as well. Now once, once it's going properly, the temperatures will re rise quite high. If it's regening correctly, you should expect to see it at least five, 600 degrees in there. Um, but I'm gonna have to skip through this. I'm just gonna leave it running. It can sometimes take up to about half an hour to do it. We'll try to come back to it shortly if I just catch it, just to show you sort of where it's up to. And then once it's, once it's finished its regen as well, we should be able to see the, the grams in there, what it's dropped down to as well. But we're looking to get it to at least below five grams, hopefully. Right, just a quick update. We're about five, 10 minutes into it now. You can see the, the grams has dropped down to 25 now. You can see we're quite nice and warm in there, about 588 degrees. So we'll just keep leaving it to it. It should just keep going. So sometimes this can take quite a while. It'll want to get that sort of content right down. So that's definitely the reason. It was probably going to take quite a while driving it to get that cleared down. So just doing the regen with a diagnostic machine just speeds the process up just while we're stuck and we've not got to be obviously out for an hour or so just driving it. I'll just come back for a quick update again. We're another 10 minutes into it, so you can see how long a uh, procedure it does take to do it once the suck content is built up to sort of like 30 grams. 30 grams is quite high, really. Um, but we're, we're, at the minute, we're down to 15 grams now, so it's still nice and warm in there. So it's going to take a little while longer yet, um, but hopefully another 15, 20 minutes, we should be getting somewhere with it. I've just gone back a bit longer again. You can see we've just got under the 10 grams now. Still reading just over 600 degrees there, but still just a little bit longer left to go. Right, let's just pop back to see where it's up to now. So it's been a bit longer again. Uh, 7.64 grams in there now. Now at the minute it's on its cool down. You can see that the temperature is dropping now. So it's just going to run through its cool down period. It'll not be too long. It must be happy at this stage. It depends. Sometimes like, it's nice to get them sometimes a little bit lower than that. I like to try to get them down to about 5 grams or a bit less if I can. Um, but that should be acceptable now. We'll just let it do its cool down period. Give it another run. Just code scan it and just make sure that the, the DPF lights out as well I and mean, it's not actually on at the minute but now that it's done that well yeah we'll just let it finish off give it a quick run and just code scan it just to make sure it's definitely got it all sorted as well but really all this issue has just been caused by having that engine fault on there this is why when you've got engine lights on and faults you shouldn't really just keep driving vehicles obviously in doing that all it's done is just cause extra problems by blocking up the dpf as well I just exited the regeneration early there. Now you are officially meant to leave it to just do the full cool down. It probably would have took about another five minutes, and all it do just get it, just let the um, the DPF just settle down in temperature. Um, but I've just finished it early. But if we just turn it off, strike it up now. See the engine warning lights off. We've got no DPF warning on there as well. We'll just do a quick code scan, just speed through that, and just make sure that it's all nice and clear in there. Right, so that's all clear. We've done a full code scan there. You can see it's all nice and green. No issues other than that one fault code, which is obviously not relating to what we're looking at there. If we just strike it up quick, and just say no DPF warning light there as well. So now at this stage, I mean, I'm going to end the video here, uh, but I will just take it for a road test as well, just to give it another two, three miles, just to make sure that nothing else comes back on. Um, but basically all these issues just caused by a map sensor failure that's all it is a pressure sensor but it's a temperature sensor as well see it's four pin should be a four pin connector on there um, but if you want to check out if you want one of these map sensors if you check the description below i'll put a link to on and where you can get them from as well but yeah just thought i'd put that video together in case anyone's having them issues with theirs if you've got them fault codes if you've caught it early enough and you've got 
them just them fault codes in there and not your dpf light on obviously you'll get away with just replacing the map sensor and fixing the fault that way um, but if you have left it too long and you've got your dpf light on as well it's going to need the the dpf clearing but i say there is a chance you could have got that cleared down just with driving once the fault's fixed the car should then initiate its own dpf regen while driving it'll only do it on a long run though when a certain amount of parameters are all met um, obviously with a diagnostic machine it's a little bit easier a bit quicker for us at a garage we can just set it to it and leave it to it and get it nice and clear so so we've got it down to about seven grams seven grams the car's obviously happy at that happy enough to leave the light off so but yeah hope you liked the video if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time